Hello everyone, thank you for joining us for this live event on using AI to enhance your negotiation outcomes. Thank you to the ones that are joining us live and to thank you to the many others that will be watching the recording of this event. I have the pleasure to have with me today two uh, experts on the topic of AI and negotiation, Mikkel and Joanna. We will ask them to introduce themselves in a moment. Having said that, of course, you know, we want to also find out a bit more about our audience and delighted to see that there is already so much happening. So you do have a chat uh, on, uh, on the StreamYard and uh, Tell us from where you're joining us. You have people from Panama, from Berlin, from Texas, from Algier. Uh, is, is there any, yeah, the recording of the event will indeed be shared. Yes, you can indeed have the recording of the event. So this is, uh, this will be available. People connecting from London, from Switzerland, you know, tell us a bit more from where you are. I think, you know, it's always a pleasure to see people joining us from, uh, uh, all over the world and, and in fact you know our own respective countries are not yet represented but uh, i'm sure that we will soon see people joining us from uh, from, uh, from from iceland from denmark uh, but let's 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 find out a bit more okay great i mean to uh, we really have uh, all the continents i mean that's uh, really amazing the topic attracted lots of attention, also thanks to our esteemed guest of today. So how about starting with uh, Joanna? Joanna, can you tell us a few words about yourself? Thank you. Thank you, Giuseppe. My name is Joanna. I'm Portuguese Icelandic, and uh, I've been teaching negotiations for about seven years. And now I'm doing research and negotiation in AI at the University of Twente. So very excited to dig a little bit deep into the topic. Fantastic. And uh, very good. Let's see, let's find out a bit more about Mikkel. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. And uh, thank you for inviting me, Giuseppe. Uh, my name is Mikkel uh, Gulsoy. I'm from Denmark. Uh, I have a background as a lawyer uh, and I have been uh, teaching negotiations since 2007. Uh, and I'm an honorary associate professor uh, at the University of Aarhus, Denmark. And right now I'm puzzling with a PhD on political negotiations at the University of Southern Denmark. Uh, and I've been negotiating for 20 years and, and been analyzing and teaching for almost as many years. So it's a very interesting time you were in with the AI uh, coming up. <laughs> Fantastic. Perfect. By the way, this is your event. So, you know, we will be taking your question as well. I do have plenty in mind, you know, that uh, I want to get uh, the, the input from Joanna and Mikkel, but uh, you may also have your own question. I'm sure you will have. So we will uh, have a moment to cover them uh, in a moment, but uh, let's get started on this one. Maybe, Joanna, I'll start with you. I mean, what type of negotiation situations are more suitable? for AI assistance? That's actually a really good question. And uh, I would say that the potential of AI negotiation is actually really vast, but especially areas demanding data analysis, consistency and rapid insights, AI will shine. So for instance, if you're dealing with extensive data, uh, such as past transition histories or market trends, AI can provide uh, insights that might be overlooked by even the most experienced negotiators. So um, actually a, a colleague of mine, Peter, uh, Dr. Peter Kesting wrote an article called How Artificial Intelligence Will Revolutionize Management Science. And he did a really interesting analogy where he says that small, wo small world or structured data environments <clears throat> is where AI uh, might shine but grand worlds, which is creativity, intuition, and the human touch still are out of reach to AI. So I know some people are also afraid to be replaced by uh, AI for critical tasks. And I recently read a book by Thomas Remch, uh, who's afraid of AI. So I'll just quote what he said, because I thought it was quite interesting. While AI has achieved feats we once deemed unlikely, it remains a tool, and we should remember that one that amplifies human capacities rather than replacing them. 
So we should use it to help us with data analysis, lots of data and making decisions, but we are still a critical part of negotiations. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, by the way, the whole topic about uh, what AI is going to do to humankind, you know, is a, is a huge topic and we may be discussing for hours on that one. But... <laughs> it's a slippery slope, yeah. Yeah, well, let, let's leave, exactly. But let's say with negotiation for a moment. And, and Mikkel, uh, I, I want to try to make it as concrete as possible to our audience. I mean, I mean, everybody's familiar with ChatGPT. How would you use chat gpt in negotiations today yeah so a thing that i think most people who knows a bit about chat gpt is that it's only as good as as the the questions you feed it or the prompts that you feed it so uh, i at the moment would advise primarily to use chat gpt as your sort of personal assistant or your uh, guidance your right hand that can help you not to overlook uh, things that you may have forgotten in the process of negotiation. Um, use it for some simulations on how to approach a certain negotiation. But it's very much uh, comes down to the prompts you feed it. Uh, so I would highly encourage people to, before starting to use ChatGPT, to get familiar with what are prompts, uh, how to prompt uh, ChatGPT. Uh, for the most effective answers. I would also recommend people to consider whether or not it's an idea to go from the free 0.5 version of ChatGPT to the $20 a month uh, version 4 of ChatGPT. And then just a personal advice that I would also give is to, if you want as accurate information from ChatGPT or assistance, I recommend that when you know who you who you are dealing with on the other side, the person you are dealing with, I would consider uh, adding an extension to your LinkedIn. Uh, there's at least one I can share here that is called Crystal Nose. Uh, Crystal Nose is a personal AI technology that will analyze your counterpart based on their social media appearance, based on their text messages on social media, and then it gathers that information and gives you ideas on if this person likes short answers or long answers, et cetera. And that, that message you get from Crystal or the, the analysis you get from Crystal knows, you can then add that into your prompts to chat DPT so that it can be more accurate in assessing uh, the predictions of a potential negotiation. Yeah. Interesting. By the way, I put into the chat uh, a couple of websites that help use artificial intelligence to estimate the personality of people. So Crystal knows the one Mikkel mentioned, humantic.ai is another popular one. And this is, again, you know, a tool that may give you insight on your counterpart. So interesting. But uh, uh, Mikkel, I want to build a bit on this topic. You mentioned that uh, you can use the chat GPT for simulations. Mm -hmm. um, how would you use it? I mean, uh, uh, so that, you know, we get really into, assume that the people in our audience are not familiar at all. Then how could they, how could they use it for, for simulation chat GPT? Yeah. So what I have, I have taught thousands of people like you have. And, and, and one of the things we realize is that people get new knowledge about how to negotiate, but doing it and remembering all the good stuff in, in real life can be difficult. So what I suggest in real life when using ChatGPT is that you use it to help you remember the right things to do. So when you feed ChatGPT with a negotiation simulation, hey, I'm entering this negotiation with a supplier. They are in this and that industry. Uh, we are going to negotiate over these points, blah, blah, blah. Um, when you go into a, a prompt like that with chat dpt uh, what i find is very important that you do is to be as precise as possible uh, and also remember that chat dpt is not uh, real time connected to the internet uh, so you, you need to give it 
the information that you have. Now, when you then get a response, for instance, you can ask ChatGPT what is my what is what would be the best strategy to deploy in this situation. ChatGPT comes with a lot of advice uh, for you that you may know somewhere in the back of your mind, but you maybe didn't have it uh, in front of your memory. Uh, so to me, that is one of the strongest points right now at the current stage of, of ChatGPT is to make sure that you actually follow the most important steps. Uh, remember to ask the right questions. And uh, I have also seen ChatGPT actually come up with some recommendations, uh, things that you could explore with the counterpart that you may not have been able to foresee yourself. Yeah. By the way, a quick point on this one: some of what's the large multinational, what's the large multinational are doing? They are buying their own version of ChatGPT, so that they can feed. Yeah. their own data as much as possible into the system without being afraid that this data, of course, you know, then it becomes a public domain or it can be used to by competition. But of course, that's a way to get more insight. Yes, Michael, you wanted to add some more. Yes. Yes. Uh, so I have done some tests on ChatGPT where I have fed it with some simulations that I use in real life situations with a uh, live audience. And uh, still, it tends to to be a bit distributive in in some of its answers uh, so it does not necessarily catch the interests of both parties in the simulation and integrate it into an optimal solution unless you are very very specific on feeding it that these are the most important interests of each party uh, now in a negotiation very often you don't know the most important interest of the other parties. So that is one of the things that could be an, uh, a challenge when using ChatGPT is that you sometimes at this stage, you need to be able to know the predominant interest of both parties and feed it to ChatGPT. Otherwise, there's a risk that it will overlook them and focus primarily on the distribution of the assets. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fantastic. Perfect. By the way, uh, you also mentioned, uh, and again, you know, we can we can help out our audience on this one that we want we have to learn how to prompt Jet GPT. Uh, what would you suggest to our audience uh, as uh, the best way to learn this? So now to prompt Jet GPT. <laughs> yeah. So actually. Um... The best way to prompt, there's a lot of free resources out there. There's like almost too many, I would say, you know, <laughs> that can become overwhelming. But there are a lot of really clever people that made available free uh, prompt uh, engineering, prompt lists. Uh, you should definitely try to get some of those lists and try it out, see the result and use your critical thinking to see if it, it makes sense or not. So we shouldn't over rely on ChatGPT which is um, sometimes tempting. We always have to check. Uh, but you can do a lot of really interesting things. For example, you can tell ChatGTP to act as. So I can say act as a, a really experienced uh, academic professor or marketing specialist. And actually, it definitely changes the reply when you ask him to act in a certain way. Uh, you can also prompt ChatGTP to write a blog post in the style of certain certain person and that's a very valuable way to actually um your prompts can be simple but it can they, you can also make them quite uh, sophisticated and quite specific you can also ask ChatGTP how you would prompt for something so he can actually tell you how to prompt so um practice makes progress for sure uh it's important to not get overwhelmed because it's a bit of a rabbit hole but definitely there are good free resources that people can download. Yeah, I, I, I totally echo what you say, Joanna. I, there are many resources out there. Uh, you cannot um, almost open your Instagram account without getting a free course on, on AI or whatever. Uh, but I, I also caution, caution people to, to try those prompts like on, on not so important negotiations or maybe just simulations before you deploy them in the real world. Because 
even some of these free resources, they have mistakes in them. Uh, for instance, I, I saw uh, a proposal that you should also ask ChatGPT to to go look at the supplier's website, which ChatGPT cannot do. So, so even though there was a lot of good prompts and information on that uh, free resource, there was also still some things that were lacking. So, like starting to run, you know, just try using it and 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 read on the sideline uh, how to to prompt and then practice uh, to get perfect and i'm not sure we will ever fully know exactly how to prompt chat tvt uh, but the more we use it the better uh, for instance uh, yesterday i tried prompting chat tvt uh, on to get, to feed me the the most normal royalty rates for licensing deals with sports stars and at first, it just gave a lot of valid points on what to look for, popularity of the star, uh, popularity of the sport, etc. Then I changed the prompt just a bit, and then certainly it gave. Uh, then uh, suddenly it gave me precise royalty rates, like a normal rate would be from this to this, but sometimes we see from this to this number, etc. So with one prompt, it gave me just basic ideas on how to go about a negotiation with a little twist it gave me numbers on on what to expect uh, of royalty rates but then one thing i would cautious again is when you ask chat GBT, can you provide provide me your resources for these royalty rates it just says no i cannot provide you because it's based on tons of data uh, etc so you still need to do some footwork or groundwork yourself to know, is this really accurate for my situation? Because if you take those numbers and think it's an objective criteria, it may turn out not to be. Yeah, perfect. And yeah, sorry, but yes, Jonas. Giuseppe, but just before we go, because we're trying to give people some helpful tools and Mikel was just saying ChatGTP can't access the internet and so on. Um, for those that have the paid plan, you can go on settings and beta uh, and you can actually activate plugins, uh, and that does give you a whole new world of things you can do with ChatGTP, such as having it read PDFs and answering all sorts of questions about PDFs um, that can be helpful to analyze long contracts, lots of information. So I urge you, if you have the paid version, to activate this beta. It works pretty well. Um, there's lots of plugins, but you can... Um, you can activate like ask uh, ask my PDF something like that, and that's a very helpful tool. Excellent, excellent, Joanna. Yes, Michael, you wanted to add some more, yeah? Yeah, I just want to add uh, some of the points I wanted to mention is that I think it's very important right now, especially from what Joanna is saying, that every company should start considering having an AI policy within their company. Because, uh, for instance, if I uploaded a PDF contract from one of my partners to JetGPT and asked it to analyze it, the company needs to have a policy. Is that something you can do? Is uh, Because right now we don't know, I don't think we know enough about the confidentiality of, of, of this stuff. You know, uh, if I share a contract between me and a, a, win, a vendor or a supplier, where will that data go? um and and who will get insights to that i may get what i want some advice on how to analyze it and how to use it in the negotiation but who else may get to have it am i without knowing it so con breaking the confidentiality of my supplier and or the business secrets of my company so i i urge that if you upload a contract like that that you uh, rinse it for all, uh, clear it for all data about your company and the other side. I think that is the most respectful way to go about it as long as we don't fully know where these data are going. Fantastic, perfect. Just a, a quick process point. First, uh, there is we got already a couple of comments which says, you know, access to the recording. No worries, all of you will have access to the recording. So this will enable you if uh, you were interrupted as a way to watch the event again. Uh, second thing, you know, this is the first on a series of three events on EI and negotiation. So 
if you're interested you know to continue the learning journey then you know our next event the present and future of ei and negotiation will be the 22nd of august at two o'clock paris time so the present and future of ei and negotiation 22nd of august two o'clock the third event will be on the 5th of september at six o'clock paris time and uh, it's a bit later so a bit more inconvenient for the asian uh, uh, colleagues i'm afraid we're interviewing uh, a professor in california and uh, that was a convenient time of course for uh, for him so uh, stay connected and you're gonna find in the chat in a moment the link to sign up for the next event on the 22nd of august so that's uh, will give you the opportunity to uh, continue to learn some more but let's enjoy joanna and michael for the time being i mean joanna let me ask you how can ai add in maintaining and tracking the negotiation process over time particularly you know, in long term or ongoing negotiations i mean what can yeah. we do in that aspect yeah, that's a really uh, a good one. So um, when you have negotiations that are ongoing for a long time, you have a lot of data. And when you have a lot of data, then it, that's where AI can really help you by analyzing it, finding trends. And you have actually companies such as Pactum, and I know you're going to talk to the <laughs> to them. The CEO, uh, the CEO the Pactum session. will be your next guest, yes. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's your next guest. Uh, which are actually using AI for exactly this kind of negotiations that are ongoing happen or happen frequently. Um, and uh, so you can actually do a lot of things with AI in long-term negotiations. For once, you can analyze the data, of course, and insights. And you have um, in multi-year uh, contracts, for instance, you can analyze the past contracts, the market trends, how the market is going, and performance metrics. For that, for you to do that inside of your company, you would need probably more than just ChatGTP. You could use machine learning platforms like TensorFlow or something like that. It's a little bit more complex, but it's possible. Then another thing that is interesting to use, it's sentiment analysis. So um, I actually have seen this in practice um, at um, EI University where they had this wow room. So while the while the professors were teaching online, they could see on a screen the faces of the students. And on they had like a graph saying bored, confused, 23% are confused, 50% are bored, 20% are engaged. So actually, if you do online negotiations, you can use AI to collect a lot of data of how the other person is, you know, receiving your information and how they're feeling about it. Um, so that's quite interesting too. Uh, you can use, of course, predictive modeling. Um, if you have historical data, you can. Uh, there's so many things you can do. You know, you can monitor compliance. So for long negotiations, you can also use AI to see are things being implemented, how so, and then chatbots like Pactum that actually take this repetitive negotiations, and you know, even though AI cannot mimic our emotions and they can you know, cannot yet uh, have emotions, but if you teach them well enough, they can mimic. So they, they cannot feel emotions, but they can mimic quite well. So there are AIs that people don't even know they're talking to AI. So for simple, more everyday negotiations, AI could even replace us without us knowing. <laughs> Yeah. But yeah, there's a lot of there's there's a lot of things, and of course I don't I don't know yeah. I, I don't know Giuseppe no. does uh, Streamyard have uh, analyzing our audience if they are bored or confused? <laughs> yeah, that would be interesting. Exactly, <laughs> they, they will be give us a sign. You know, if you're still there, put us a quick <laughs> comment on the chat so that uh, you tell us whether we are on track or not. But uh, you know, this this topic of the sentiment analysis. Uh, is for sure something that uh, uh, you know may may be interesting for our audience. So, uh, how far are we from uh, having those kind of tools uh, available for uh, normal commercial negotiation? I mean, uh, what what is your insight on this one? So well, I, uh, yeah, yeah, as, 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 yeah, I can just uh, spark it off, and then you can continue, Joanna. As Joanna said, there are already. 
a lot of um, programs and extensions and stuff like that uh, out there. Uh, like you said, Paxum is uh, AI is doing a great job on on doing supplier negotiations. Um, that has become pretty extensive in terms of not only handling very simple negotiation with two or three uh, points to negotiate, but also multiple uh, valuables and variables. Um, so, so that's that's very interesting to have this automate automation process. Uh, and as I understand, uh, most of the suppliers like it because they have time to think about their response where negotiating in real life is often a stressful uh, a process to too many people. Uh, so they can, it can even foster maybe a better relationship or it can leave uh, the negotiations to be done by the bots, but then the relationship building to be done by by the people in, in the respective companies. Uh, and I also see already right now we have these hackle bots that are can negotiate your parking ticket or, or whatever or whatever you have. So uh, definitely this is, is is growing. And to to the majority of us, this is pretty new. This is something that came like one year ago with ChatGPT or less. Uh, but uh, for those who have been more engaged in it, uh, at least uh, there's been a competition since, since 2011 called the uh, Automated Negotiating Agent Competition. So I think I think we're just in the beginning of, of what is coming and commercially it's it's definitely going to play a big role in the future. Yeah, Mikael, okay. that's a, that's a good point. And also, Mikael, I don't know if you've known, but they did a lot of research on uh, AI replacing lawyers <laughs> and they seem to be doing pretty well with not too complex. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but I think it's going to go really fast. That's the thing. We had a boom and now you see every day new solutions appearing. So yeah. uh, I don't think it will take long. Yeah. Now, Jonah, exactly. Now, uh, the, on the topic of the sentiment analysis, you know, there is an interest in our audience also on this one. Now, uh, how can we incorporate it uh, in uh, in negotiation? And let's say something which uh, is there any tools which is... Uh, uh, already available because uh, our audience also asking, you know, can you tell us, you know, some put in the chat, you know, some of the uh, AI tools that you mentioned, those kind of things. So uh, for sentiment analysis, you know, staying with one topic at a time, uh, what what do you see available right now in uh, so actually, uh, for sentiment analysis, I've experienced it twice. Uh, first person, I did take a training at MIT where they were using it. Uh, they were analyzing us as we were negotiating and gave us a report afterwards. In terms of uh, accessible to the public, I've heard of IBM's Watson's tone analyzer. Um, I don't know how available it is for everyone. Um, I'm sure that there's a lot of solutions being developed for that. Um, I don't know how many, because these I saw that were developed in-house for to be used by these specific companies. Um, but I think a good Google search would probably give us some, some names. And I think it's really helpful in negotiations, especially because so many have moved online after COVID, after all the lockdown. So now we have all these video hours that we can analyze and analyze life and have a feel of what's happening. Um, Mikael, I don't know if you know of any specific names of tools for sentiment analysis. Well, I, I think that the issue with some of the sentiment analysis uh, software is that when we work with body language, which is also where we read people's emotions from, we always talk about knowing a person's baseline because a person may look bored by nature uh without being bored right so so if so if the if the software you're using is, is uh, basing its analysis on standard expressions of um engagement or uh, boredom uh, then it may not be accurate because if you don't know this person's uh, normal behavior you know some people when they win a million in, in the lottery they they don't raise an eyebrow and other people <laughs> jump around screaming, right? So so I think there's some issues that needs to be fixed or at least looked into how they are solving that issue on establishing a baseline before starting a sentiment uh, uh, analysis. That is one thing, but 
I still find with uh, extensions such as Crystal Note, and it's just the one that I use, there may be others out there, is it, it is said to be 80% accurate on assessing a person's uh, preferences as to timing, as to length of sentences, as to should it be numbers heavy or word heavy, et cetera. And, and I think getting getting that information, if I were negotiating against Giuseppe or with Giuseppe, and I got that data from Crystal Nose, and I used that data in my prompt on, on ChatGPT, how would you respond to Giuseppe knowing this about his preferences? Then that response I get from ChatGPT may be more, uh, way more accurate and influential. However, I still think the main problem is that people generally prepare too little when they go into a negotiation. So if people think that ChatGPT is uh, jumping the fence uh, and, 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 and cutting the, the preparation time, I think they are, they are not doing a, a good job. I think we need to recognize that you should have three preparation phases, preparing before using ChatGPT, then preparing uh, for the negotiation, uh, or, or then asking ChatGPT, then getting some information and then using that to prepare again, and then maybe revisit the process. Uh, and the problem is it, it takes time to be good. Uh, and, and most people are still not spending the accurate amount of time to do a proper job in, in negotiation. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. Just, uh, you know, there are, uh, there are uh, a few comments here from the audiences, uh, you know, regarding the recording, the recording, we will make the recording available using the same link that we are using to register for this event. So go to the same link and you will get the recording. Now for what's concerned, uh, the AI tools that we mentioned, maybe I will ask Jonah or Mikkel to add them into the chat so that in such a way they are already available with the recording. They will come also to the people that will watch the recording, then uh, everything will be available, the chat and the recording for everyone so that you can find all this information back to you. But, uh, uh, before we go into the writing, maybe Jonah, I would like to ask you some more because uh, you know, you mentioned about all those changes that uh, the the chat GPT is bringing, sentiment analysis, all those kind of things. And then the question is, how uh, may artificial intelligence change the training and skill set required for effective negotiation in the future? So to answer that question, first, we have to kind of dwell on what makes a good negotiator and how can we train a good negotiator. So a colleague of mine, Professor Remy Smolinski, has spent a lot of time trying to define what a great negotiator is, and it's not an easy task. Um, but briefly, I would say there are some competences that will have to change on a good negotiator in the future. And one of them is that uh, future great negotiators are going to have to be pretty good at using AI and anal analyzing um, results from AI. So analyzing what, um, what AI is telling them. Um, future negotiators would also have to put more focus on our human skills. So the soft, they call it the soft skills. Some people don't like the name, but your active listening skills, your asking good question skills and things like that. And we'll have to put less emphasis on figuring out exactly the mathematics of the deal because AI will pretty much replace that. Um, so I would say that, uh, for example, Remy talks about using objective criteria as a competence of a really good negotiator. And I think AI could easily replace that because it will analyze data really fast and make decisions based on the data. Um, AI can also generate creative options, which is something that we uh, expert negotiators talk about as a critical thing to have, be creative. But you can actually train AI to brainstorm and propose really creative options. Um, so if we would talk about some things that could be actually supplemented by AI, by AI if we're negotiating um, online, for example, if we're on negotiating through email, something like that, we could use 
um, teach people to use AI to improve their quality of expression, to speak uh, better, to, to be um, connecting better with people, active listening and questioning, create good questions, uh, and uh, things that are really far from AI is managing emotions. That's something we still have to do. And let's face it, people aren't great at managing emotions. So on trainings, we could put a lot more emphasis and I teach conflict resolution and conflict de-escalation. We could put more emphasis on that. Uh, how do you handle the room? How do you de-escalate when people get angry? And how do you build better relationships? So I see in the future that these things will go more into the top of the training goals. And everything that is more analytical, it's easier to use AI to help us with. Um, yeah. So, uh, Mikael, you probably want to add something to that? Uh, yeah, I, I I think you're very right on 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 a lot of the points. Uh, still, I mentioned earlier that on objective criteria, if you're talking about AI as a system where you feed it with with data that are relevant and updated, then then I I totally agree. If you're using Chat GPT, we have the problem with the royalty rates that I mentioned that we don't know where the data is coming from. Uh, we cannot really see if they are accurate or not for our situation. So we may get a, a response that 10 to 15% is normal. And then I enter the negotiation with 15, but it turns out to be extremely competitive. But in my mind, I think I'm being fair because mm -hmm. I think I'm within the cooperative span, right? So you may come in with the intention of being cooperative, but you end up being competitive without even knowing it, scaring the other side to run away. Uh, so that's a huge issue. Now, one, one, one tip I would like to, to share on not only teaching, but also using uh, chat GPT in, in, in negotiation is uh, when you prompt a, a chat GPT with your scenario, you can then say, which questions do you think I should ask the other side? And it actually gives you a lot of questions. And some of the things I see a lot of negotiators being not so good at is preparing the right questions in advance. Chat DPT can help you at least suggest uh, a couple of, or, or maybe even 10, 15 questions that could be relevant. And then maybe those questions can make you think about other questions. Now, another little twist that I really would like the listeners to do is to prompt Chat DPT with which questions can I anticipate from the other side given, given this scenario? Because a lot of things that makes negotiation a bit uncomfortable is that you have not prepared which questions you can anticipate. And therefore, your answers have to come top of mind and not top of preparedness. Mm -hmm. So, so that, is, that is some of the things that I use it for right now. And it's extremely helpful. Yeah, that's a really good point. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Now, Jonah, there is one point that I would like to go a bit deeper. It's this yeah. idea of the creativity. You know, we traditionally associate creativity to the human kind of realm, right? You know, so the data is AI and the creativity is the human being. But you just mentioned that, you know, <laughs> we can train AI to come up with a number of creative ideas. You know, can you tell us a bit more to our audience on this one? Yeah, I know it's a bit sad <laughs> that AI can actually be so creative. If, if, if you ever used Mind Journey, for example, Giuseppe, I don't know if you've ever used it. It's absolutely crazy, the, the art that AI can create. Uh, just mind, blow, mind blowing, really. And I think it's because what we think it's creativity a lot of times is based on a lot of things we saw and we got inspired through the work of other people. So when you feed AI with lots and lots and lots of data, it learns and it can create totally new things based on that. So um, our creativity is maybe unfortunately not so much uh, something that just comes into our mind. It is a collection of our experiences in the world of all the artwork we've saw, of all the books we read, and then we come up with what we think is something new but it's maybe a new arrangement of a lot of things that we saw. And, uh, and in that way, AI can analyze so much more data than we could possibly even dream of in our whole lifetime, and therefore can come up with a lot of what we would call quite creative 
uh, ideas, solutions, artwork, music. Um, so I think we're coming into an area of a bit of a disappointment of how maybe we are not as special as we thought or our superpowers might be different than we expected. Okay. <laughs> What do you think, Miguel? Do you agree yeah. or do you want to challenge that? No, I, I, I agree that, you know, our memory is limited where AI's memory is 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 unlimited to some extent. I, I have read some, some places that uh, some of the AI systems needs to have their memory sort of uh, reignited every now and then uh, for it not to forget or not to use some of the things that it hasn't used for a long time. Um, I, I also think when you talk about creativity, just ask, for instance, ChatGPT, what could be creative solutions to this situation? Uh, what could be alternative uh, solutions to ne or, or alternative negotiation points in this scenario? And what you will find is it will will actually feed you a lot of interesting ideas. Uh, some of which you may have thought about, some of which you may have used in the past, but you have forgotten in the present. But now you you get re reminded that this is also a, a, a road you could go go down exploring with the other side. So really use it as a personal assistant that helps you uh, with doing some of the preparation and research that may be something you will not do when you have a bad hair day because uh, the AI the, never ha has a bad hair day or, 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 or the like, you know, it's, it's, it's always on point, but it's, it's rational, like on, unlike us, but I think the more advanced it becomes, it can also factor in irrational behaviors. And, and, and that will be very interesting, especially when, when we can see when it has taken those measures into account. Yeah, and and Giuseppe, for once, uh, one thing I once asked ChatGTP to generate a title for a New York Times best-selling book on the topic of uh, negotiation in AI, and it would be just—I was absolutely impressed with the quality of the titles he came came up with within like thirty seconds. And I I don't think if I would go on a yoga retreat for a week that I would come up with something that exciting. So. There's definitely um, a lot of interesting uh, things ChatGTP can come up with. Perfect. Now <laughs> we are we are approaching the end of our event. Now, Jonas, what I will ask you to do, maybe for a minute, is write in the chat a few names of some of the tools that you mentioned, so that because uh, our audience is asking for some specific name or website that they can use. And in the meantime, let me ask a question to Mikel. And the question to Mikel is, what are the potential challenges or drawbacks of integrating AI into negotiation practice? And then how can we mitigate them? Yeah. So one of the things I have mentioned, but I, I really must stress this, is the, the confidentiality measures. I, I really strongly advise companies to develop a, a policy and, and, and have a meeting with their employees on, on what they can and cannot upload or share on on uh, online uh, um, AI like, like ChatGPT. Um, the challenges, of course, is the emotional part, because as, at least for now, it seems that we still have the emotional uh, overhand uh, or upper hand in 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 uh, uh, in respect of AI. However, we must also recognize that having emotions can also be a drawback in itself. Uh, so maybe we know more about emotions, but we also act on emotions in ways that are not necessarily optimal. So um, for now. Uh, having the emotional advantage is only to to be more uh, capable of connecting with other people where AI may be still a bit more blunt on that measure. But again, still, if you ask it to prompt a nice greeting, it may come up with something that is way more nice than, than if you had to do it yourself in a hurry, uh, because ChatGPT is never in a hurry. It, it just does what it's asked to do. But if you are asked to do something, but you're in a hurry, your message might be uh, uh, lacking quality because of that. Um, one other thing that right now ChatGPT or similar uh, programs cannot do is it doesn't know about the other person. 
it doesn't know if they have just been promoted and they need to show results to their boss and therefore therefore they may act in in a certain way if they are getting a raise if they close this deal very profitable uh, it cannot factor these things in and maybe you also cannot but but you you may have other ways of exploring those incentives or variables so that is definitely a, a little drawback to to the ai right now uh, but generally speaking i have been i've been more positive uh, the, uh surprised by by the the power that most of the ai products have right now uh, i'm i'm considering in the future if it will be AI against AI and then person with person on building relationships and then the AI will uh, negotiate on on behalf of, of, of most of the uh, negotiations uh, with or without our knowledge uh, that that will be very interesting. Uh -huh. uh, John, do you want to comment on the same question? I mean, do you see any issue on this topic of integrating AI into negotiation practices and how can we mitigate it? Yeah, I, I see a lot of issues, of course, like Miguel is the lawyer, so we already talked about all confidentiality and, and all these ethical things we need to be careful of. Uh, I would also say there's another risk of over-reliance on AI, that people just over-rely on the answers they're getting without uh, using their critical thinking and really going through the answers they're getting. Uh, so that's another thing we really have to keep, uh, keep track on, especially moving towards the future. Uh, there'll be generations that are going to be born with these things and we, we need to keep ourselves trained to think, right? Because it's very easy to ask ChatGTP and all of a sudden you're not really thinking enough. Or <laughs> So um, I would see that at this moment, those are the two main risks that we are looking into and, and the ethical component, you know. Um, there's a lot of ethical things and, and yeah, Mikael, you want to... Yeah, I also think uh, you know you can always find mistakes that that AI will do in a negotiation or uh, ChatGPT. But how about all the mistakes we make as humans? Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> if you well, we, uh, ChatGPT only got two percent in discount on this. Yeah, but it only took it one minute to to get there. Uh, it took you two months to get to three percent. So. How does that balance up, and 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 uh, what what about all the other mistakes we are doing? So, uh, right now it's 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 easy to also find some critical points on AI, which surely are there. Uh, but I would argue that there are probably way more issues with with people negotiating. Not because we are bad people, but just because we are people. We have a lot of things going on all the time. We cannot be picture perfect. We have a bad hair day. We have whatever going on. We are not homo economicus. We are not completely rational. Um, so we make, I, I would argue, many more mistakes than, than AI is doing. But what if we took the best of our human uh, nature and and use that in conjunction with AI, then maybe we're getting to a place where, where the partnership will be very, very fruitful to, to everybody involved. Yeah. Now, our time is running. So maybe there is one last topic that, uh, you know, we have a lots of comments, comments about how can I compare to AI system or, you know, which is the best AI tool for negotiation? You know, is there any final word that you can say about uh, this one. Joanna, go first. Well, I would say, uh, just to respond to Manuel, the best AI tool for negotiations will depend on exactly what are you analyzing. So uh, if you want to analyze data, there's some tools you could use. You could use ChatGTP. Um, if you are actually uh, you could use, for example, Otter. If you're allowed to record your negotiations, then you can get a, a summary of the recording. You can get a transcript. You can get the highlights. You can ask questions. Um, so it depends on what you are doing with the negotiation per se. Uh, so for preparation, I would use uh, for sure ChatGTP to support on that, creating, generating questions and 
potential questions I'll get asked. But there are several tools you could use. There, I wouldn't say there's only one. What would you say, Mikael? Yeah, again, if you're in a large company and you have a lot of suppliers or whatever, or a lot of customers that are having similar negotiations uh, running every year or every second year, uh, AI tools like Pactum AI or other uh, uh, tools out there like that, like Hacklebots or whatever, uh, I would uh, recommend looking into that. Uh, again, it takes a lot of time to set it up because it needs to be fit with with the history also mm -hmm. of purchases in order for it to to be able to spot trends in the past and then of course it will start to gather trends itself uh, once it gets started but it needs some uh, feed feed that is accurate um, but for many many negotiations uh, that you are doing on a, an everyday basis that are not just recurring uh, supply negotiations I really think just pick one, like just take Jet GPT uh, and, and start to read about how to prompt, start to use it. Um, maybe have some prompts that you use generally in all your upstart of a negotiation. You prompt it with this amount of data and you have these prompts that you give it all the time so that you get more acquainted with using AI uh, and, and specifically Jet GPT. Uh, again, the very simple, which questions could I anticipate, which, what could be good answers to those questions? Uh, not because you then need to mimic those answers, but it, it, it sparks your own creativity and it saves you a lot of time on thinking about these things. And then you can be more focused on it and maybe ask yourself, are there any questions or any responses that ChatGPT did not give me? that I would like to answer. Uh, yeah. that, is a, that is a way to use it, in my opinion. Then it can okay. become very powerful. Thank you, by the way. And with this comment, also, you gave me the opportunity, mentioning Pactum AI, you gave me the opportunity to remind our audience that we are going to have two more events about uh, artificial intelligence and negotiation. The next one is on the 22nd of August at 2 o'clock Paris time, and one of the persons that we will be interviewing is indeed the CEO of Pactum AI. So this is a company that helps large multinational automate their negotiations and with uh, you know recurrence case spend, simpler type of negotiation. So and then we are going to also have uh, two one one university professor in Canada one uh, AI negotiation expert in the US, and we'll be talking with them about uh, uh, the present and future of AI. So uh, don't, don't miss the opportunity. You can sign up right away, and you find the link uh, into the chat. To conclude, uh, Mikel, you still uh, have one more idea for the audience. Yeah. Fantastic. You're so yeah. We have so generous audience today, so yeah. so generous speaker today that are giving plenty of ideas. Go, Mikel. Oh, I, I just wanted to, to, to say one thing. If you have a negotiating partner on the other side that you know very well, or you are in a negotiation with a, a counterpart that is uh, where negotiations are souring or uh, uh, deadlocking, uh, what you could do consider is to invite your counterpart to sit down together with chat GPT and, and feed it with your current situation and then ask chat GPT together with your counterpart, hey, we're stuck in this situation. How do you think we should resolve this? I've even read a post on LinkedIn a couple of days ago from a mediator who sat down with conflicting parties and they were really astonished with how ChatGPT uh, actually came up with some suggestions and solutions that 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 broke out of the deadlock situation and actually had the parties uh, uh, looking at the situation from different perspectives. And I also think it can maybe depersonalize and maybe it can give a little smile on the face of each uh, party uh, when when you sit down and, and use it for that. So. Again, a, a, a creative use of, of, of chat TPG could be to use it not solely before you negotiate, but use it with the other side um, if you know them very well. Or if you're at a deadlock, then say, hey, 
it seems we're not pro progressing very well. How about letting uh, uh, AI help us? And, and maybe that in itself can ease the emotions. Fantastic. Yeah. Jonah, Mikkel, that was a very rich exchange. Thank you very much. And by the way, you know, the audience is just confirming the, this, you know, that uh, um, it was an extremely rich event. Lots of learning, lots of comments in the chat. We are sorry if we couldn't take uh, all the comments that came uh, our way. But uh, again, you know, a warm thank you to Jonah and, uh, and Mikkel for this and look forward to reconnecting with you on the 22nd at two o'clock Paris time for uh, some more insight on EI and negotiation. Thanks again and Thank all you, the very best that. to our speakers <laughs> and to our audience that uh, uh, help us make this uh, uh, rich and interactive session. All the best. Thank you. Thank you so Thank you. much. <laughs> Thank you.